from Acton Town to Wimbledon, from Brixton to beyond. Come love your London with us and sing with us this song. There's no more smog but we've a vlog to brighten up your day. Come love your London with us from Q to Haringey. Come out with us and play. Love your London. Have a banana. In today's episode of Love Your London, we do some horsing around, visit the impressive Fairlop waters and tell you how Fairlop got its name. Talk about giant trees, mysterious wizards and much, much more. But first, as always, we start our journey at the local station. Hey, here we are. We're in Barkingside. It's a brand new series. A brand new series. It's Barkingside and Fairlop. Now, what on earth happened to um, episode 7 of Barking and Dagenham? It is still coming. Uh, however, the file got corrupted, uh, the, the, the sound you can barely hear, um, and, and it's the wrong frame, work, frame rate and everything, so it's going to take a lot of work to try and get that one finished. Um, I've already spent about a month on it, I've just said, right, I'm not going to spend any more time doing this episode, um, I'll go back to it, maybe have to refilm it. Let's start the new series, Barking Side and Fairlop. Now, Barking Side sounds an awful lot like barking, of course, but it's not in the London borough of Barking and Dagenham, it's actually in the borough of Redbridge. Um, so it's a, it's a brand new area. It's called Barking Side, probably because it was on the barking side of the great forest that used to be around here. So the old forest of Essex uh, used to be a big, massive forest. Um, it was a private hunting ground in the 12th and 13th century for all the Norman kings, and, uh, and, and then eventually it was bought back by the people of Essex um, and sort of turned into private areas. Uh, and of course, the forest itself ended up becoming completely deforested. After after the forest was removed from forest law by the people of Essex. Most of Hainault Forest um, also got deforested in the 1850s and as I said just a tenth of it remains and that's known as the Hainault Forest Country Park. Uh, but Hainault is going to be getting its own series when we get to H so we'll cover that then. But uh, the, so the name Barking Side probably comes from the fact that this was on the barking side of Hainault Forest. Not really to do with barking, we've actually quite a quite a, a few miles away from barking at the moment. Now, so here we are at this uh, lovely station, barking side. Uh, it's lovely outside, you'll see it in a moment. It opened in 1903, um, started off actually being on the Great Eastern Railway. So you didn't get trains like this, these, uh, these electric trains used to have these fantastic steam trains that would thunder through the station until the 29th of November 1947, which is when it became uh, part of the central line that you've just seen going past now. Just to, just to uh, yeah, if you look up there, the uh, brackets in these canopies, it looks like it says ER, uh, nothing to do with our late Queen, it actually says GER, if you look very, very carefully. It stands for Great Eastern Railway, which is obviously what this used to be part of. Um, it's, um, th this, this is actually on what is now known as the Hainault Loop, uh, used to be known as the Fairlop Loop. We'll actually be visiting Fairlop properly, uh, well, later on in this episode and most of the next episode. Um, it's in Zone 4. And because it's on the central line, it means that it's on the 24-hour uh, night tube on the weekend. So today's Friday, there'll be a tube running all night tonight. Lucky people at parking side. Now, this station is actually only partly accessible. Um, as you can see, uh, there's, um, there's the exit, it's on this side, we're on the eastbound platform. If you want to go westbound into London, you have to go up those stairs over there, which um, uh, are most certainly not accessible, unfortunately. Probably not an awful lot they can, you can, they can do about it because this is a grade two star listed station, and you'll see why when we go outside. What it does mean is that, uh, unfortunately, the men's toilets are here. Uh, the ladies' toilets are over there, so uh, if you are a wheelchair user, you can only really use the men's toilets if you're heading eastbound. Uh, so, or if you identify as male, rather, uh, then you can use those toilets. If you identify as female, um, then you have to use those ones, so they're not accessible at all. In fact, as you can see yet again, like, like some of the others, the toilets are closed anyway because of antisocial behaviour. Sharon needs the toilet. So she's going to she's going to have to go. Uh, the, her toilets have not been vandalised. It seems. Uh, looks like it's open to me. Um, uh, so she has to go through the waiting room for hers. So 
So you can see the ladies' toilet over there, which Sharon just visited. That was open. Clearly, the ladies of uh, Barking Side are much better behaved than the men. And there's a baby changing uh, facilities in there, but not in the men's. I mean, the men's are closed anyway. But that is again just so old-fashioned. I mean, if you're going to if you're going to segregate the toilets, have baby changing areas in the men's as well, because this is the 21st century. For goodness' sake, I'll just make them all unisex, especially as one's on the accessible side and one isn't. It's ridiculous in this day and age. Anyway, yes. let's. Here. Absolutely. We'll be doing a special on accessibility on the London Network with one of our patrons, Kate Carrier, uh, later this year, hopefully. Um, but anyway, let's go and have a look on the outside of this fantastic station. Now, check this out, out here. Um, the, uh, the roof of this station, it's called a hammer beam. Uh, this, this sort of structure. Uh, well, in fact, this is the only station on the entire network that's got a roof like this. Uh, you normally see that sort of thing in grand halls and cathedrals and stuff like that, not on top of a station. So, ham is the only station with a hammer beam roof. And that's why it's grade two star listed. Wants them all. Yeah, so just over there, uh, near the station, or you have to go all the way around, uh, there is the little stadium, holds 3,000 people of, um, this is Redbridge FC um, Football Club. Nothing to do with Dagenham and Redbridge, that's a much larger club. Um, Redbridge FC, and it's also the home of Newbury Forest FC. Newbury Forest is in the Eastern Counties League, Division 1 South, which is on the 10th level of football. And Redbridge FC uh, were just promoted to the Isthmian League North Division, which is on Step 8. Much older team, but as I said, nothing to do with Dagenham and Redbridge. That team, Redbridge FC, used to be known as Ford uh, FC, because it used to actually be the team for the people who used to work at Ford in Dagenham and if you want to find, a, uh, find out about Ford then look at episode 6 of our Barking in Dagenham series and find out all about the connections of Ford and how important Ford was to that area. It's called Oakside uh, the stadium, Oakside Stadium. Why is it called Oakside Stadium? Well we're going to be talking in a moment about oaks uh, and about the very important oaks that used to be here and you'll find out that well there's a park We'll, we'll talk about uh, that in a moment, exactly why it was called Oakside. Fascinating story. Anyway, let's carry on. Okay, so as you can see up there, says Bridal Way number 94. Um, now, there are plenty of horses around here, so uh, we'll find out a little bit why there's Bridal Ways. Let's just having a little walk up here. The park is over there. We'll be visiting that shortly in this episode. But first of all, let's just have a little trot down here. Okay, so um, we are at the moment in an area called Aldborough Hatch. Um, and the reason why it's called Aldborough Hatch is quite possibly, well, they, they, they used to be um, a hatch style gate like this one. Obviously, this is a very new one uh, that used to go up into, Hain, uh, into Hainault Forest. So this area is known as Aldborough Hatch because of the hatch gate. I love this, these little gates. Alternatively, I could have uh, chosen to use the style over there. But seeing we're in Aldbury, Aldborough Hatch, may as well use the hatched gate as a style. Um, now over there, we're going to a place called the Aldborough Hall uh, Equestrian Centre. It's strange it's called Aldborough Hall because there is no Aldborough Hall here. Uh, there used to be a manor house here, owned by the Aldborough family a long, long time ago, but it wasn't Aldborough Hall. There is an Aldborough Hall in Yorkshire, uh, nothing to do with this place, but I suppose they maybe called it Aldborough Hall because it sounds quite grand and it's quite fit befitting for an equestrian centre. Yeah, so the, um, the word um, hatch, funny enough, it comes from the old English word hake, H-A-E-C-C, -C, um, and that actually where we get hatch from, uh, from that word, and it refers to sort of those hatched gates that we just saw there. Um, and as I said, this, um, the Aldsburg family was a medieval family that used to live around here, um, but uh, their manor house is long gone. 
So this place actually uh, trains students for their BHS examinations. That's the British Horse Society. Um, let's go through this, this little side gate. Isn't this cute? Look, there's another little hatch gate over there. That was probably, almost certainly, would have probably be, have been made in Dagenham down the road at some point. Yes, as you can see, this is um, this is a place for serious riders, people who want to uh, do it. It's not just like somewhere where you can just hire out a pony or, 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 or for, for a day. Um, but lovely, here we go, there's some, some horses. Yeah. We don't see horses very much living in the central London, so this is a real treat, probably for any of our countryside viewers. This is old hat, well obviously this old hat, uh, but this is lovely and it's a real treat uh, when you live in, in the built up areas to come and have a little walk around. You're, you're very welcome to come in here and, and have a walk around and see the horses. You just can't ride them unless you are... Well, make sure to check in with reception. Yes, make, make sure you check in with reception. But okay. look at this. Hello. See, here the flies aren't as much as Look at you in there. Aren't you happy? That'd be cool. Oh, you little baby. Look at that. This is Luna. Oh, look at Luna. Look at those beautiful blue eyes you've yeah. got. You are beautiful. Look at you. If you imagine it had a horn on it, that would be a perfect unicorn. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. Fresh air. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. Oh. Someone's had a little roll. <laughs> this is Tintin. Yay! One of my favourite comics. Someone's been rolling around. <sighs> well, they've, all got, they've all got their heads out to say hello. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, beautiful. Lovely. Very familiar smell. Hello Nikki. Look at that beautiful horse. She's lovely. Yeah, this is obviously where they, this is the one of the places where this is part of the riding school where people can, can learn how to take the horse slowly around an enclosure. Uh, but there's lots of, uh, lots of open tracks as well. So you can see now on your screen, there's lots of, uh, lots of outdoor areas. Okay, I think that's enough horsing around. Let's check, uh, let's check the park. Uh, this is Fairlop Waters County Park. It's all part of this lovely area called Fairlop Waters. I'll explain why it's called Fairlop in a moment when we get up there. Uh, but it's already called Waters because there's a beautiful lake up here. Um, and this whole area is just absolutely breathtaking. It takes a long time to walk all the way around here. Uh, it's a very hot day today, um, being towards the end of June as we are. Um, oh, look, look up there, Sparrowhawk. It looks like a sparrowhawk. Is that? Yeah, it's getting ready. Oh no! Is it a sparrowhawk? I don't know. I think it is. It's only a little. Tell you what, tell, tell us in the, in the comments yeah. if that's a, spar a, a sparrowhawk or not. We need to we need to get you commenting. We need to get you commenting because YouTube loves comments. Uh, it helps our algorithms and also just please remember to share these videos and uh, and uh, you, and I mean that's really most thing. Like this video as well. And if you're not a subscriber yet, it doesn't cost you anything. Just click that subscribe button because it really does help us get those numbers up. Because the more people who subscribe, the better we feel that we're not just like doing this to an empty audience. We just want more people to watch um, and it helps our algorithms. And also, if you do want to help us out financially, we do have a Patreon uh, account. Uh, you can see on your screen, you can see in the description below details on how if you want to uh, send us a couple of quid for, 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 for coffee every month, that'd be fantastic. Anyway, we're just going to have a little walk up here to the boathouse and to the beautiful lake. Uh, the lake is, um, there's lots of activities around the lake. Uh, you've got, uh, you can go sailing, you can go, there's this whole activity thing uh, up there as well um, on the water where if you want to get really wet you can. Um, there's, uh, if you like fishing, you can go angling in a special fishing pond that's next to the lake. Um, uh, there's some boulders and all sorts of things that you can climb over. We'll have a little look at that in a moment. And there's also the, the Fairlop Sky Run. 
uh, we did similar to the sort of thing we did in Alexandra Park um, a few series ago uh, so we're not going to do that again back during the wars um, this area was in fact a landing strip for pilots so with quite a few people sadly lost their life here uh, a lot of pilots there was a couple of nasty accidents used to be RAF Fairlop um, and funnily enough um, between World War One and World War Two, uh, they were thinking of turning this into a commercial airport. Um, and then, after World War Two finished, um, they they thought of it again. They thought, let's 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 have Fairlop International Airport. Have a, well, let's have Fairlop Airport here, um, and and make it a commercial airport. Um, uh, but the uh, the actual RAF um, Fairlop closed down in I think 1950, and by about 1953, uh, all ideas of of making a, a commercial airport for the people of Fairlop, uh, which is going to be a, a major London airport. They were thinking that was going to be the, well, the, the main international airport for London at one point. Uh, those were all shelved. Uh, but yeah, so the people of Fairlop, fortunately they don't, but the people of Fairlop could have had a massive big airport here on this beautiful land. Instead we've got these lovely trees and, and flowers, but a, a lot fewer trees than there obviously used to be back in those days before the major deforestation in 1850. And of course back in the, 12, in the 1200s this was just all beautiful forest that was uh, being used for by the, uh, by the king, the Norman kings, to hunt them. Yeah, so here we are, this is the Fairlop Waters, it's a lovely lake, you can, you can go on pedalos, you can go sailing, there's a boat club which we're going to check out in a moment. Over there you can see just over there you've got some uh, interesting activities. That's all part of Aqua Action over there. Oh, look at them! I know. Goslings are growing up. Look at the, the yep. runt. You see that it still hasn't fledged at all. Yeah. There we go. Uh, you, can, you can hire boats, as you can see. That's actually pretty reasonable for London. Um, boat hire, child uh, under 17, uh, four pounds for half an hour. Adult, eight pounds for half an hour, or 20 pounds for two adults and two children. Um, that's. Uh, that's fairly reasonable, I would have thought. I mean, that's, that's not bad at all. Two adults and two children, £20 for half an hour on a boat around this fantastic area. There's a little island in the middle and, um, and beyond the island, there's a smaller little pond for anglers, if that's your thing. Not my thing personally, uh, but I know a lot of people like it. Uh, and they have a sailing club, fairlockwaterssailingclub.co.uk. Uh, there's a boat club. They've got Fairlop Rowing Club as well. Um, and of course here is Aqua Action, which is a sort of a, an assault course uh, that you can hire. Uh, looks really fun. It's sort of like, like that, um, that series on TV that uh, used to be on, uh, where, you, where you sort of like run around and actually it's exactly like that, isn't it? Yeah, so we're here in Aqua Action, which is uh, it's, it's a bit of everything. It reminds me of that um, game show that was on TV. Is that based on that, or did they...? I'm not too sure. I think they just wanted to put an inflatable water park for when it's all hot. That's um, fun. Yeah. It looks fantastic. I mean, how much is it to...? So we're £20 per person, that's for everybody. And then we have an additional charge of £2 for socks. However, if you do have your own socks, we recommend you bring them. OK. And um, and uh, so like a, what is it for? Is it different prices for different ages or? So no, it? everyone has to pay the twenty pounds, and then everybody is two pound for the grip socks. Unless obviously you have your own. Okay. We have a minimum age of six and seven, but they must be accompanied by an adult on a one to two ratio. And obviously everybody over the age of eight, you're allowed out there, but everybody must be able to swim. Okay, that's fantastic. And uh, and how long how long is the session? So you get one hour on the park. So we recommend you come about thirty minutes beforehand. So we get you ready for the session. Get your safety brief and then get you out on time ready for your hour. What are they? Yes, little... So you can hire them and go around the park, go around the lake. Well, look, you've got here... And for a little uh, scale electric car, RC. What's this for? A little remote control car racing in there. Remote control car racing in there, look at that. Yeah. It doesn't look like it's been used for a while. Oh, there we go. Due to COVID-19 outbreak, this site will be closed to the public until further notice. Right. Well, COVID was a long, long time ago. I know it's still sort of like there, but um, I'm surprised that it's not reopened because we're now in June 2023. So what's all that about? 
Um, and here we have the, the rowing club. Skyrooms for kids, you've got high boats for members of the public and look, a little train for small kids. A little train for and, and, and with the rowing boats you can, uh, you can just... Yep, rowing and pedal, you can hire, they've even got a couple of electric boats so you can, yeah. you can have fun driving yourself around the lake and here's the hidden secret you might want to focus on actually because it's very cool. Yeah. Up in the top corner of the lake is the famous, the infamous, because it's been there for about 12 years, the Boulder Park. Oh yeah. What's beautiful about it is they've all got names, like one's called Dumbo the Elephant, one's called the Magic Mushroom. Yeah, lovely. Um, then each boulder has about 20, 20 or 25 methods of ascent, and it's for age one through to, you know, 100. Excellent. So they've got, each boulder has proper technical, mm. you know, tough ascents. One of them is called the Spider-Man Rock, because you have to do proper upside down stuff to get to the top. So right. when I, we drive the train around and every time we go around, you've got professionals there, you've got two-year-olds with their dad, so it's a brilliant kind of surprise facility, you know what I mean? And very few people actually twig that it's here. Oh, and are you ready for this? Yeah. This is going to really, you're going to love this. Ainult Forest has, which I discovered eight weeks ago, a wizard. It's got a wizard? It's got a wizard. Wow. He's called, he's called Trevor. Yeah. He's dressed entirely with the purple peaked hat, purple robes. He's got his really elaborate staff. And Trevor's specialty is the energy paths and the microcelium spore system of trees. Fantastic. So he heals energy. And he's been very busy in Fort Hainault lately because all the construction disrupted and affected the trees. So he's busy going around healing the trees, healing the energy. And he loves spending time with kids. So really? he... He will, the wizard will talk to kids oh, and something. you'll find the wizard there every two or three weekends if you're lucky you'll see him, see him around on uh, Saturday or Sunday okay uh, so I couldn't believe my eyes it's just like seriously yeah. wizard and I went to talk to him and he explained everything he does so oh. he's a, one of those wonderful people yeah who heals the forest that's mm. brilliant mm. That's resident yeah, here yeah, yeah. in Hainault Excellent. Well, what a place. We were, we were thinking of, we were thinking of doing Hainault separately when we get to H, but um, oh, this, well, sort maybe, like, yeah. this sort of area is mm. sort of Hainault as well, is it? Or yeah, Hainault is part of Redbridge. Right, okay. So, but, but you are right, Hainault is yeah. its completely own forest in its own right. I'm making everybody smile. Smile in the world, smile at this year. Uh, so what's your name? Uh, Mr. Wizard from Hainault. Indeed, so check out Mr. Wizard from Hainault, he's a great guy. Sometimes he's out with his divining rod. Oh cool. Checking the energy parts. Yes. Yeah. Well that'll be so, something to see. We'll, yeah. we'll, 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 we'll definitely oh, let us know when he's there and we'll, we'll make mm. a special visit. These rowing boats, can they be hired as well or are they there just no, for... No, you can join the club and then they will teach you to row for next to nothing. Right. So there's a full on very active rowing club just out here. Do you know how much it costs to, uh, to learn? I, mean, I do just, not. No, I'll find out. We'll but, find out. But listen, uh, Tris, as you walk past, glance on your left, sometimes they're there training. You'll see them. Okay. okay. Cool. Thank you. And how much is it to you see the thing on the train? Oh, just, just three pounds. Just three pounds. Okay, we'll yeah, make sure. Next time you're out driving, nice, let us know. Nice I to meet you too. Same here, yeah, same here. Do, 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 do check out our channel. Yay. It's full of interesting no, I history. love the work you do, you yeah? know, because it's, it's for benefits the community. So yeah. keep right. up the good work. Oh, yeah. Thank no, you. We started this thing during COVID and we're just going to keep going. It's it's just what, what a nice excuse to get out and yeah. meet people. But I hope you earn some money off it, do you? Not We're yet. Not yet. Not yet. No, no. Not yet. We, 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 we've got, uh, we've got, we've got more than a thousand subscribers. It just uh, takes Which is one of, the, one of the marks. So we need 4,000 hours. Uh, so we're almost there. Got like almost, there. Right. almost there. Almost Thank there. Thank you. We'll get there. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you too. All right. See you, bye. Thank you. Bye. And there we go. We have uh, a pint of inches. £4.50 a pint in a plastic glass. Uh, obviously it's plastic because we're, we're outside, uh, these, are, these are takeouts, but um, uh, yeah, it's nice, it's nice. I suppose £4.50 is actually good value for London these days, I'm afraid. Prices, prices have just gone up, sky rocketed up. I mean, I paid £6.75 for a pint the other day. Absolutely shocking, not going to go back there again. Anyway, so let's uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy the, uh, beautiful, the beautiful Fairlock waters. <laughs> Oh, you're sleeping! That's the one here! <laughs> <laughs> 
good. It's a lovely place, lots of sports, fair lot. You've got the rowing over there, windsurfing. Um, in the winter time, actually on the other side of the ponds, there's, a, there's an area for ice skating uh, as well. Uh, probably in the old, old days, you'd be able to skate on the actual lake, but um, not these days so much. We don't really get those severe winters uh, that we used to get. Um, and, uh, but also you can, there's an areas for cricket, bowling, table tennis, and of course you have the Ilford Wanderers Rugby Club as well. Um, so there's really, this is a really sporty area. There's something for everyone around here. Unfortunately, not really for me. I'm not really a very sporty person. Uh, used to play basketball when I was younger, but that's about it these days. Oh, you just got raving. Wait, that's wait, 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 wait. Yes. You just got raving. You burn <laughs> calories that way. That's true. Yeah, I go. Yeah, go to the odd rave. Okay, so while we're while we're here in this beautiful location uh, of the boathouse, uh, we are. I mean, it's a, uh, they used to be here. One of the most amazing trees that these islands have ever had. It's was massive it was probably the biggest oak tree in the country uh, the circumference was 60 feet um, and it had 17 massive branches coming out of it most of those branches were 12 feet in girth the oak is so famous that in the 18th century gypsies actually used to call Fairlop Baba Rukneski Gav um, which um, uh, they had they had about they had names for about forty different towns uh, around uh, around England, uh, but this was the only area of London that they gave its own own name to. Um, apart from London itself, that was Mikranslisky uh, Cav, which means my king's town. Um, but anyway, uh, so this uh, oak tree was unfortunately severely vandalised by the local youth in the years well, sort of in the early 1800s, uh, and then in uh, in 1805 it was actually set fire to. Um, and unfortunately, in the big massive gale in 1820, uh, the oak fell. And that was the end of the oak tree. But, um, let's tell you a little bit about the name Fairlop, because it's all to do with the oak tree. Now, there used to be an, an amazing fair here, um, called, well, it didn't start off being called Fairlop Fair, uh, but it was later on. This annual fair uh, was held here for 175 years, from 1725 to 1900 and it was always on the first Friday of July. Um, it has actually been resuscitated, it's now on the first Saturday of July. There was one last year, um, unfortunately this year there isn't one, I don't think there is one. I think they're instead having some kind of open day on the second Saturday of July. Uh, hopefully it will come back because um, uh, 1725 that means that uh, in two years time it would be its 300th anniversary so um, I do hope that Fairlop Fair comes back and gets called Fairlop Fair like it used to become because um, it's uh, it started 298 years ago uh, so come on I really hope Redbridge Council uh, haven't sort of changed it to Fairlop Open Day uh, they, they give it back its old name. Uh, now, Fairlop Fair was founded by a marine engineer from Wapping, uh, and his name was Daniel Day. Um, and as I said, it used to take place on the first Friday of July. He was a real showman. It was basically a circus, I mean, all these acrobats and, and, and exotic animals, um, and 200,000 people would attend it. Um, in fact, it used to create, back in the, uh, in the from 1725 onwards, it used to create a, a traffic jam of so many horses and carts trying to get here. Um, Queen Anne used to come here. Uh, she loved it, apparently, uh, the fair. 200,000? 200,000 people that's would like, come here. That's almost as big as Glastonbury. Yes. That's, that's a, a, a large city. Well, it's bigger. It, 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 it's, yes, it is. For, for yes, that, that is, yeah. That's enormous. Um, uh, and and, it, and I mean it'd be such a show because uh, he'd, he'd bring all the animals here and and uh, funny as funny enough uh, Daniel Day uh, had a really nasty traffic accident yes there were traffic accidents back then um, and uh, since then he, he never used to use the roads so what he would do being a being a uh, marine engineer from Wapping he would actually go on the Roding River remember the Roding River we we had a nice little uh, walk down the Roding River in uh, episode three on our series of on Barking and Dagenham he used to go on a boat which had wheels on it so very an early amphibious vehicle uh, he used, uh, which he built himself uh, and he used to take it from his place in Wapping to the Thames up Roding River um, and uh, and then 
the be horses to take the uh, to take his boat on wheels as you can see on this engraving here um, uh, to the to the um, to the fair which he founded uh, and um, but obviously not other people we used to come here in huge big sort of sharabangs I suppose you'd call them they were big big uh, horse-drawn uh, buses uh, which would hold up to up to 35 people in each um, and uh, we they'd come from central London bringing in these 200,000 people um, and um, each each man on board uh, I don't think the women did each man on board would have um, a big massive stone uh, bottle uh, between their legs um, full of full of uh, drink for them to be merry I don't I, I don't think I uh, the women obviously did drink as well but I don't think it was considered appropriate for their, them to have these they would have squirreled things away these, in their skirts these bottles yes, between their legs no. that was a little bit too no, lascivious uh, it's probably considered a bit common uh, for women to do that in those days. Obviously, not these days. Plenty of women with bottles behind <laughs> between their legs these days. <laughs> That's not at all common. No. Um, now, there's a great poem. Uh, you, you've been seeing actually some engravings on your screen while I've been talking to you. There's a great poem uh, that was published about the about the fair in 1811, uh, and you can actually read it in its entirety on the Spitalfields Life website. Uh, it's a post, a, a story that's posted by the gentle author, uh, which uh, is a, a friend of, of this channel. Um, and uh, there's a link to the poem in the description below. But I'm going to, I'm going to quote this little bit. Um, this is from stanza 11 of the 53 in the poem. To see this oak, folks are so mad, they travel far and near. They say it's of so large a size, it shades an acre clear. When he died, um, they actually lopped off a, um, a, a big branch of the oak tree uh, to make his coffin. Um, he died in 1767 and it was that that's where we get the name Fairlop from uh, because a branch was lopped off the oak tree in where the fair was and that's where we get Fairlop from a uh, fantastic story as you can see um, <coughs> there's a, another little engraving here um, and I'm now going to read from stanzas 18 to 20 of the poem he also from the tree did take a branch of noble size a coffin for himself to make in which they say he lies though while he lived he every day his merry promise kept till he no longer could appear but in that coffin slept yet to the oak still every year increasing numbers came and soon they called it Fairlop Fair and since it bears that name that's the story of Fairlop how it got its name um, and uh, enough dress So here we are, we're at the Forest Farm Shop and Garden Centre. Um, been looking forward to coming here because this is, um, this is, a, this is a, a, meant to be an amazing place. Uh, they've got, um, they've got award-winning um, uh, honey here, um, uh, made by, a, uh, by a local, it's all local, locally f uh, sourced honey. Uh, the beekeeper is rather is award-winning. I'm not sure if the honey is. I assume that it is as well. If he if he's won an award for his beekeeping, I assume he's won it also for his honey. Uh, his name is Jim um, Jim McNeil to be to be exact. In fact, I think everything in the shop is all locally sourced, yes. uh, including um, including the meat. Uh, they've got a, they've got a, a very well-known butcher in here called the Bearded Butcher, who uh, hopefully uh, we can meet if he's there now. Here we are, Forest Farm Shop. Here we go, look at these, all locally sourced, even the avocados. Avocados? 
I think everything is locally sourced. I think that's their that's their thing. Well, we'll ask him about that. Well, even the surely the bananas, the bananas aren't. Kent. Produ yeah, produce of Kent. Kent cherries. <gasps> Broccoli. No. No, no, I'm just looking. I'm okay. Just looking. Well, that's actually all right. Look at this. Filia Monte Cristo. Four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. That's not bad, is it? There you go. Hello. Hi. We're, I don't know if you got our email. We we love your London. We're doing like little a little video about about uh, Barking Side and Fairlock. Oh no. And I, and for, for YouTube, his uh, uh, channel. Uh, I don't know. And, and we're hoping to speak to the bearded butcher. That's it's, me. That's you. Oh, wow. I've heard you. I've heard. I've heard you're one of the best butchers around. <laughs> don't about that. <laughs> eh? No, you're not. You are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, we are. Yeah, you are. You are. Uh, right here, anyway. Yeah, I'm yes, sure it's yes. fantastic. My name's Brad. Brad. Bag. Brad. Brad. B R A D. Brad. Lovely, lovely, lovely. As in Brad Pitt. I'm Brad Pitt. I'm Cess Pitt. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and and you're the son-in-law of the original owner, no. is that right? No, the son-in-law. That's my father-in-law. Oh, that's your father? Yeah, yeah. father-in-law. Father that's that's my wife. Lovely Hello. to be here. Hello. Oh, Hello. 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 So your name's Brad. Your name's Sue. Sue. Oh, you got some amazing. It's all all organic can start as well. Isn't we're it? not we're not, we don't do okay. organic, but we do you know free range and free to roam, and it's all sourced from Smithfield Meat Market and local farms and local suppliers. That's brilliant. And you open every day until five, and only until two p.m. on Sundays. That's that right? correct. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah, done yeah. my research. Yeah, uh, fantastic. Unfortunately, we've got a whole day walking around, so I can't buy anything oh, that's today. All right, no but I will definitely no come back here. Come back and see us any time you want. Maybe I will you know. do. We're doing amazing kebabs at the moment as well. How much are your burgers? I'm, I'm interested. They are, they are chuck and rib cat burgers. Yeah, that's all that's in them. No additives, no oh, wheat, so like no salt. salt, no pepper, no, nothing. And how much are they? Have 150 each for oh, 100, 100, 168 grand. That is amazing. Oh my God. There you go. Oh man. There you go. All right. Oh, let's get a little on that. So, that's, so that's, that is 5.98 for two burgers. For four. For, for four, four burgers? Yeah. Yeah, feel that wheat. Fantastic. Oh, that's okay. great. Just meat, no, no onion, salt, nothing or anything. Else. Fantastic. Nothing else in them. Oh, I'm definitely, I will definitely be back. Come back and see Fantastic. Let me give you our card anyway. All right, mate. Uh, they'll be in a couple of weeks up oh, here on YouTube. Thank you so uh, much. Uh, where's, where's the honey man, uh, Jim? Jim McNeil, is he here? I don't know. You might have to go and ask the lady down there with the tattoos. Go and ask her down there. Okay. And this is the famous honey by Jim McNeil. Essex honey, £10 a jar. Okay, so um, here, here we are, we're outside, just going to be very, very briefly tell you about Fairlop Station. It's not an awful lot we can say about it. It's very, very similar to what we've already told you about Barkingside, so I won't go into much detail. Obviously, Barkingside is a much more attractive station that is Grade 2 listed, this, this isn't. Um, but like Barkingside, it, was, it opened on 1903, um, and it was part of that whole Great Eastern uh, Railway. Um, and like, like, the, like Barkingside, you've also got on the platform those ornate GER things up in the bracketry. Like Barkingside, it's on the central line, in Zone 4, and it's also open all night on Friday nights and Saturday nights. It joined the central line in 1948, just like Barkingside. Um, as far as toilets, um, well, first of all, this station is not accessible at all. Uh, steps, so not even the eastbound platform is accessible. It's all, all not accessible. Again, there are toilets in there. Yay! But they're not accessible because obviously they're down steps. Uh, but again, it's uh, men's only uh, on the eastbound platform and the women's on the westbound platform. Why? Why not just make them both unisex? It's just ridiculous. It's get with the times, people. This isn't actually on our schedule, schedule stop at all, but we're just passing King Solomon High School. Uh, and I'm just wondering why on earth there's a, a big watchtower. It's like it it's almost looks like it used to be a prison or something. Let me just... There we go. What is all that about? Are the students so bad that they need a, a watchtower? I don't know, uh, but yeah, uh, but, but, but do say so in the comments. Interesting, maybe it used to be something else, or maybe the, the students are slightly unruly. Um, but do let us know. We're now going to make our way over to, um, to a little pub down there. Well, it's quite a big pub. It's now Weatherspoons, and it's called the New Fairlow Oak Pub. I'll explain why when we get there, because there's a, there's a new oak tree there, which is sort of like going to... It's, it's been put there to replace the old one, although it's 
not in the same place and it's not as impressive anyway let's go and have a look so in, in, so in 1951 for the festival of Britain uh, they planted in the middle of this roundabout this oak tree here so that was uh, been there since 1951 um, that is to sort of even though we're quite some distance away from the original oak that gave Fairlop its name um, this is uh, obviously they're hoping that this will maybe here also here for hundreds of years uh, it's doing quite well so far in the past um, 70 or so um, so that is the new oak tree um, and uh, it's actually we, we have here a, a Weatherspoons pub called the new Fairlop Oak which is um, they've actually got some information on the walls in there about the old the old oak but I've already told you about that by the way see that lovely building over there we're going to be talking about that in the next episode that's the library and it's a fantastic building designed by one of the most amazing architects of this country has produced um, but we'll talk about that in the next episode uh, along with a load of other things so we will you'll see that in the little outro to this uh, to this video you'll see some of the other things we'll be talking about but we're going to finish off this episode I think quite befittingly having a swift drink at the new Fairlop Oak as I said it's a Weatherspoon so the prices should be reasonable um, and uh, then we'll be taking you on the journey to episode two but uh, let's just uh, have a little quick look inside this pub and see what treasures there are because one thing about Weatherspoons that I can say is that they do actually take a great interest in local history so there's going to be lots of pictures in there about the about the oak tree which you already know about but there you go if you wanted to can corroborate the stuff that I've been telling you come in here and I'm sure that you'll be able to do so let's uh, have a look there we go as you can see it looks like a lovely lovely pub and we'll have a look at the uh, where are the pictures here we go um, so as you can see we've got some pictures here of the old fairground that used to be here that's probably not the old fairground at all but here's a picture of the oak look at that fantastic and there's some more pictures up here information as most weather spoons have information there you go all about Fairlock Fair and this painting actually from 1820 by Charles Robert Leslie 1820 was the year it fell so here are some pictures of the more recent Fairlock Fair uh, which obviously continued up until 1900 um, I don't know how old that picture is maybe it's from around about that time but, um, but as I said the Fairlock Fair did um, did get uh, resuscitated recently and I really hope that it keeps its old name of Fairlock Fair um, for its 300th anniversary which is in two years time here's some more amazing pictures and there's a picture here about famous oaks as well I won't disturb these people oh and also in our next episode we'll be telling you all about this man here uh, this is Ken Aston very very famous referee we'll be telling you why he's a famous referee in the next episode so if you're into your your history of, of famous referees this is one for you it really is famous probably the most influential referee forget about Pierluigi, Pierluigi Colina and Matt Lott he's probably the most famous most influential referee in the history of association football okay so here we are in the garden of the new Fairlop Oak pub um, and uh, this is more like it I mean I know it's a weather spoons but uh, normally this would be £2.35 for a pint of uh, Stouffer Tress Cider but it's only £1.40 because we're getting something treat as well so £1.40 a pint amazing amazing as I said so here we are uh, we now look forward to our next episode where we'll be talking about Trevor Brooking we'll be talking about Bernardo's we'll be talking about all sorts of exciting things uh, and of course we'll be talking about that referee uh, that we mentioned a few moments ago um, and much much more so do join us in the next episode See you later. Bye. Bye. Oh, God, that's so naff. I can't believe we're still doing it. Next time on Love Your London, we'll be talking about that fabulous library and the architect behind it. And we'll be telling you a lot more about why that referee was so famous. We visit the house of a famous English singer, talk about Sir Trevor Brooking's old school, visit the Checkers, Bernardo's, and much, much more. Till next time. From Acton Town to Wimbledon, from Brixton to beyond. Love your London. 
have a banana.